Hey everybody, what's up? BQ here. This is the Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review. Took a couple weeks off since Impact took a couple weeks off and now we're going to be talking about the latest episode of Impact Wrestling. Some people were asking last week about the song that I placed at the intro of the podcast and that was me rapping. That was uh that was me. I used to do music, um just retired from it so to speak a couple years ago, but I did uh did music for about 15 years and um, had a lot of success, collaborated with a lot of my favorite artists and um, it, it, good times. And, you know, and I, I still see some uh, little income come through uh, iTunes and Spotify and all that good stuff. But in all honesty, completely lost the passion for music. And um, if I'm sure many of you out there listening are probably independent artists and uh, they call it a starving artist for a reason. And uh, even when you bring in money with music, it's never, it's never what you put into it. You know what I mean? Um, it's okay to you, you you get something a little bit here and there, but the process of creating and writing and everything and mixing, you know, you don't get paid what you're worth in any way. So it was time for me to move away from that, and I'm still deciding on an opening for the show. Um, I said it a few weeks ago. I accidentally deleted the opening and I knew what it was called but I could not find it on the internet so I'm gonna have to uh search around but we'll do so I am doing this podcast solo today so this is the deal and this is probably the way it's gonna be every single month when I have my reserve weekend um it's very difficult for me to report record the impact review because we do the impact review Saturday mornings um and for the most part even with my civilian job, Saturday mornings have been open for the most part. But when I'm doing my uh, uh, Air Force Reserve duty, I'm there, you know, I, I'm up at 5 a.m. and I'm there a majority of the day. And with Adam being in the UK, that kind of throws a, a wrench in things a little. And it's it's really difficult to schedule around with that weekend. So um, just to give you guys a heads up from, from here on out, if it's going to be my... Uh, reserve weekend which is usually the first or second weekend of the month then you're going to be hearing me by myself because that's just easier the show today is brought to you by draft i'm a big fantasy basketball guy i play for money every single night and the best and easiest way to do it is with draft visit playdraft.com slash bq for a free three dollar entry so impact First impact of 2018. What'd you guys think of it? I thought this was excellent. I thought it was a great show. I don't think it was, you know, an A plus show by any means, but I really enjoyed it. I don't know about some of you. I was sitting at work and someone wrote me on Twitter and said the new impact episode is on the GWN. <laughs> so I fired it up and sure enough it was. And this was like a day, a day or two before impact aired and i watched it at work which was awesome because thursday night i was at work so i couldn't have watched it anyway so uh was able to fire it up on my phone and really enjoy the episode I, I hope you guys did too there was uh some hits and misses as always and right now i just don't think they have the roster um they, they got a talented roster but i don't think they have the roster currently uh to put a Put together a banging top to bottom show i think there's just always going to be holes with it but it's a new year it's a new creative it's a new regime it's a new direction and we were saying this last year and i was really excited last year for jeff jared and all that i really truly was but by the end of 2017 i really i really didn't care for a whole lot of it not that i didn't enjoy the episodes but th there was just too much drama I liked 2016 a lot better than I liked 2017. Uh, curious to know if you guys feel the same way at all, but you know, the kind of that last TNA year, I thought that was a good year. And, and, and this past year, it just, there was just so much, you know, changing of the guards and the wrestlers were changing and the wrestlers were coming and going. And then the people we were watching on TV as, you know, TNA just a year ago, two years ago, like not featured, Many of them got released. Many of them walked away. So it's a brand new company. I'm really hoping um, come this next set of tapings, they get away from the green ropes. Now, I was initially a fan of the green ropes. 
watching Global Force Wrestling, the Amped Anthology, I thought the green lo- ropes looked really cool. But something about watching it on Impact just doesn't work. I, I think it's... I think it's because the green kind of doesn't really match the, um, even though blue and green are green are complementary to each other. I don't think the, that color, that shade of green, the neon green matches with the Anthem logo and it, it just looks awkward. I don't really care for it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that's going to, going to change here soon. I don't even know why they went back to the green in Canada. They should have just kept the bound for glory ropes, but you know, maybe they wanted, Bound for Glory to look special. A lot of people have been saying every year, you know, the ring's got to be different. The uh, apron's got to be different. So it's whatever. But last couple episodes of the year and this whole set of Canada tapings has been really good. I think the crowd's been really good. It's been really full. And, you know, they're, uh, of course, and we've talked about this before about, you know, patting the crowd a little bit and uh, paying some of the people. But from what I understand, they only paid a hundred people over the course of five days. So it wasn't like, you know, the entire crowd by any means, it was just to fill, to fill gaps. And that night after bound for glory, that was the one that was like super dead. So we got a couple of weeks of just like super small crowds there. Now, last year I was at bound for glory, but, and I've said it before, smallest crowd I've ever seen in the impact zone of every time I've been. So maybe I said just something about the night after a big pay-per-view, and maybe maybe they should just consider taking it off. You know, I understand that's maybe not cost efficient, but you got to give people the opportunity to breathe a little bit. So, again, I thought a really really good episode for the most part. This kicked off with the X Division title match of Taji Ishimori versus Trevor Lee. Now, if you're on social media at all, it was pretty difficult to escape the spoiler. Um. Pro Wrestling Noah, Noah's Twitter, I think, uh, <laughs> tweeted the picture out. And the picture of Ishimori with the belt was really surfacing around the net. So it was kind of hard to get around that one. Um, and we'll get to the tag team title match here at the end. That was one I, I wasn't aware of. you know. But this Ishimori one, I, I've known since the very beginning of the tapings. And uh, I knew that's where they're going. So I think it was only fair, you know, to strengthen that relationship with Noah. You got Eddie Edwards holding their top prize. And for the most part, Ishimori, he's, he's had some success with Impact. Marafuji didn't look good at all, which really sucks because I think he's excellent. But this was a good X Division match. I think um, the title change was probably needed. You know, like it always, the last couple of years just seems like it's just X, it's just Trevor Lee's X division, but at the same time, he's holding the title just to hold it kind of like a placeholder. It just never felt, even though the X division has, has come back in the last year, it just never felt like, oh, this badass X division champion. However, with the whole call of Lee thing, I think that's been a big improvement to Trevor's character. And if you guys heard... The conference call that I did with, um, I was on the line for this one with uh, Andrew, not Andrew Everett, but Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee. It doesn't seem like Andrew Everett is in the team going forward. So it was really lazy to throw him in there to begin with and the way that they did it. However, I liked the the three-man unit. If you're going to be the cult of Lee, like, you know, have three guys. It doesn't seem like he's in a group going forward. He's doing a lot with Noah right now. Someone had point, pointed out a trend that it seems like when someone goes to Noah or uh, starts doing a bunch of AAA matches, they're the next ones to go. <laughs> I mean, think of like Bram and um, uh, Robbie E. And it could be that way for DJZ. I think it's safe to say DJZ is not featured at this next set of tapings. He's not with the company anymore. So I'm curious to see what happens with that. But... um. I think that the change was probably needed. I don't know what this is going to mean for the title going forward and how much Ishi, you know, how long Ishimori is going to hold this. But Rose says all the time in the podcast, it's time for someone for Noah or Triple H to win a title. I'm not throwing Crash in there because I believe that partnership is donezo. But it was time for one of these guys to win. And that's going to make their matches going forward a little more unpredictable. So Ishimori wins and... I'm sure this we're going to get another match between the two. We might get it next episode for all we know. 
usually like with wrestling, regardless of company, they kind of tend to rush the rematches so that they can move on to something else instead of, you know, kind of drawing the, um, the program out. So Ishimori is your X division champion. The only thing that I really didn't care for with this match was the end. And this was the first time of two times that they did this to where the challenger, you know, this happened in the main event too, got like a near fall and then set up and went for their finisher and then got the fall. And I think what they, I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about when I say that. I think it makes the end very anticlimactic because usually you want to get the crowd into it. You're hitting a bunch of high impact moves and you hit your setup move and put them down and then, you know, you start climbing the top rope, getting ready to go hit the finisher. But when you have like this near fall, you, you, the guy just barely kicks out before three and then you transition that to the finisher. It makes the, um, the person who lost the match look really bad, look really weak. And in both cases, the champions looked kind of weak. So that being said, didn't care for that, but it's going to be fun to see what go, what happens going forward. I mean, the guy, I don't know how much English he speaks, so he's not going to be cutting promos, but we'll see what happens going forward. Um, grand championship match. I think this was my favorite match of the evening. Um, EC3 defended against Fala Ba and Matt Seidel. Now, Fala Ba has been a comedy character up to this point. A bit of a jobber. All of a sudden, just kind of gets thrown into this grand championship match with EC3 that he almost wins. The, the really odd thing about this, um, and I'm glad he's getting some kind of push. That's good. But the odd thing about this is, is of all people in the world that he's getting, you know, I shouldn't say his comeuppance because he hasn't beat him, but just that he's on a roll against is EC3. Probably the last person that he should be on a roll versus. He should have, you know, chopped up a couple wins. Trevor Lee, uh, not Trevor Lee, but Caleb Conley. Um, you know, maybe, a, maybe a jobber here or there. So that's just like the really weird part. You know, they, they, I, I hope that Falaba continues to get a push to the next set of tapings because we saw this with Garza. Uh, he started getting that push. Remember last <laughs> the the Bound for Glory build wrestled at Bound for Glory in an X Division match when he was you know in the main event scene for a few weeks, and we haven't even seen him since. So I hope they don't kind of go that route with Fala Ba. I hope I hope they're not just like looking for placeholders. It feels like maybe they're throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks, which is a good thing because they need to you know build new stars. But they're really struggling with this main event scene right now. And I think they may do that. I think they might kind of might, might throw shit at the wall. But I really like the three-way dynamic here. And I I had been wanting to see a three-way match for quite some time. I didn't think they were ever going to pull it off. But I thought it worked. And, I've, I've you know, I'm someone that likes the, the Grand Championship format. They've never really delivered it properly. So when they did that first tournament, the one that Aaron Rex won... And they did, you know, the qual not the qualifying match, but the, you know, um, a tournament first round match every week and everything. Those, especially the Gr Drew Galloway and Eddie Edwards ones, won. Those were really good because when the bell rang, they were immediately going after each other. The, like the style of wrestling changed. And now with the Grand Cha Championship matches, the style of wrestling is no different. They're still just wrestling a normal match, except there's a pause. I don't care about the bell. I really don't. I mean, if it was a two out of three falls match, they would stop it. Um, commercial breaks stop it. Even during the match, they roll out of the ring. So it doesn't bother me. Speaking of two out of three falls, I didn't watch the last two episodes of Impact, the um, end of the year episodes. I, re I really just didn't care to watch them. W wasn't the two out of three falls match between Loki and Sanjay in that? I thought that was the worst match at Slammiversary by a mile. So I, I just, I, w I was bored out of my mind during it and I loved Slammiversary. I just did not like that match at all. So kind of, kind of odd choice. But anyway, the, the grand championship match I thought it delivered as far as a three-way match goes. I think, um, I think EC3 looked really good in this. There was moments where I'm just like, dude, EC3 is getting his ass whooped by Fala Ba, you know, and even Matt Seidel to an extent. Like, we're seeing EC3 in the mid-card, but he's also wrestling like a mid-carder. He's not, like, 
a main event or in the mid card scene. You know, kind of. Like, I mean, the best comparison I can make is John Cena. He when he had the whole U.S. title for a little while. You know, he was a main. He was in the mid card scene, but he was a main eventer, and the matches were big because he was in them. EC3 is almost wrestling. Maybe this is not his fault, but it's almost like he's wrestling down to the opponent rather than them wrestling up to him necessarily. But EC3 wins this. I actually really thought Matt Seidel was going to win. And they, I think they've done a good job with not not being too predictable as far as this goes. You know, I think everybody thought, oh, well, the predictable thing is for Matt Seidel to pull this off. They they made it so Matt Seidel did not even win a single round. So they continue that underdog story with him. Like, dude, not only can you not win the big one, you couldn't even win a round. The crazy thing is Falabot did win a round, and he's probably not going to be the number one contender going forward. It's probably going to be Matt Seidel. They timed it really well with the finish, hit the shooting star press. If you guys caught this, Matt Seidel was interviewed after the match, and he actually teased dropping the rules. He said, I say we fire the... The judges get rid of the rules. So maybe we're starting to head that direction now of getting rid of them. I'm good either way. I know many of you do not like the rules. But that's what I think is happening going forward. I think they're laying the groundwork to do that because the rules have what have protected EC3 thus far. So I think that's what's going to happen. And But the, the thing is, I think the Grand Championship format, when it's called Grand... I think it was it was based off a Japanese style match. So if it's not I don't know what I'm trying to say here. The Grand is not a proper name for it if it's just a normal title. And it's got the old Impact logo on it, so maybe we're going to see that title change. I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, look at the current title situation. I kind of like the knockouts and the and the uh, X division and the tag titles. I think those look fine with the plates over them. The Global Championship looks like crap. And I didn't even mind the Global Championship prior. Now, when Magnus showed up with the GFW title, like I had said on the podcast, wow, what a gorgeous belt. These GFW ones are gorgeous. I think the, you know, the women's and all that stuff, I thought they looked better with the green than the blue. So I think that's what kind of throws it off a little bit. But the blue placard over the green belt and everything, like it just looks bad. And I don't want... EC3, to, I mean EC3, Eli Drake to be known for the guy holding the ugly title. It's kind of like J- Jeff Hardy when he had that one belt, whatever it was called. It looked like the freaking Divas Championship. Like that's what I associate with Jeff Hardy being TNA champion. I don't want them to associate that belt, you know, with Eli Drake to where it's like that's the only, he's the only person to hold that belt, if you know what I'm saying. Like he ends up losing it and then they change the title. So he needs a long run, but um, I'm, I'm kind of getting off course here. EC3 wins. They're going to move forward with EC3 and Matt Seidel. I think they're doing a pretty good job with this storyline so far. Moose arrives, and he's attacked by KM. I think they really overexposed KM. We're going to get to that match here in a second, but I think they really overexposed KM in this feud. Like, you know, back when he was trying to you know, get their attention, jumping the guys to the gym and stuff, they should have left it at that. We shouldn't have seen KM on TV last week, and we shouldn't have seen him this week prior to the match. Ali gets interviewed backstage. You guys noticed Ali was a little more serious than normal. Like, she still got, and I've talked about this before, she still had a hint of what brought her to the dance, but... It almost seems like they're going a little more serious of a direction with her. They have to have they have to find a good balance between Allie and, and Cherry Bomb, to be honest. And I've often said, don't go full Cherry Bomb, but find something in the middle. Um, Laurel Van Ness attacks her. Laurel has, you know, in, in interviews, she's kind of dodged the question, but she's also kind of teased that she's not going anywhere. I'm pre- I'm pretty confident that she's going somewhere. So we'll see what happens. I don't think Allie wins at the tapings. I, I truly stand by the fact that I think Rosemary wins. And they build up to Allie versus Rosemary at Slammiversary. And Allie can get that knockouts title win with streamers and balloons and, you know, pay-per-view. All that stuff. That's really where I think they need to go. But they need to start building up Rosemary again. 
So, James Storm versus Dan Lambert. No holds barred match. Now, for several years, as long as I can remember in wrestling, when they do a no DQ, no holds barred match, and it features a non wrestler, that's always how they protect the non wrestler. But whenever they do that, you know you're going to get shenanigans. You know you're going to get a BS finish. You know, like, so when they, when they, Announce a stipulation. I already knew his match was going to suck. And uh, they kick it off. And, J- you know, Dan Lambert had said earlier in the night, hey, guys, take the take the night off. Now, you know they're not going to take the night off. Let's, let's be real here. You know there's not going to be any kind of wrestling in this match. And I think they could have got away with it a little bit. You know, have them do something like, Think about Bound for Glory with Stefan Bonner and King Mo, and you know they were able to incorporate fighting in there and everything. They, they could have done something, um, you know, but they chose not to. So immediately, American Top Team, uh, Team America, F yeah, they come down to the ring, and it's it's just shenanigans from the beginning. What I kind of liked was that Storm kept getting back up regardless of what they were doing to him. So that kind of I kind of like that. Kind of made sense. Okay, we're, he's not going to just go down in the first, you know, 30 seconds of the match. I like that Lambert just, like, kept continually going for the cover. Um, I think for him, <laughs> I think Storm should have got some more offense in against them. You know, been more of a fighter. I like that he landed the last call again on that, <laughs> that manager guy. That was hilarious. And uh, I thought when KM came down, that that should have been the end of the match. With that being said, I don't think we should have seen KM last week, and I don't think we should have seen him this week. Should you just do what you did at Bound for Glory with Homicide. Bound for Glory with Homicide. Just show Moose laid out. It's not difficult to do that, you know. Um, American Top Team could have j- jumped them. You know, protect KM. Have KM come down, and get that help. Um, help Dan Lambert get the victory. Instead, KM comes down, does the you know the beer bottle that still doesn't beat him. And it bugged me last week when, or not last week, but a couple. Of weeks, I think I keep saying last week, so I apologize. But a couple of weeks ago, when KM came down and you know went for his finisher and didn't get to hit it, like they have an opportunity here to go a new direction with KM, and he's still feeling really jobberish. And I don't like that. Go serious with him. And I think you can have a really nice monster heel if you do this the right way. I think they've already dropped the ball a couple times as far as that goes. But that doesn't get the win. And then what was really weird was the finish that it, they did have when he was just like standing there. And he knows he's surrounded by all these guys and he's just standing there. Like he wasn't looking dazed. It was like, I got these guys flanking my left and right, but I'm just standing there staring at Dan Lambert. They smash his head with the beer bottles and you know, on each side and Dan Lambert gets, gets the win. Long story short, the worst possible way to send James storm out. I was optimistic going into it. You know, I wanted Dan Lambert to continue to get over as a heel, but for what, if Lashley's gone in the summer, you know, for what, where is it, where is it going? It really feels like this with with this American top team thing that they're just like spinning the wheels every episode. Like there's no, I, I, I truly feel like they have no end game for them. Like, they're just like, let's just keep going with this and see where it progresses to naturally. I think, you know, there was, and it wasn't until I was listening to the Heel cast the other day. Um, Shouts out to those guys. But I was listening to the Heel, Heel cast and Hurls was talking about, you know, he thinks initially for Bound for Glory, it was supposed to be American Top Team versus Jeff Jarrett, you know, because that's kind of what they were teasing. And I'm like, yeah, I think he's right because... I remember saying on the podcast how random they're making this Moose and Lashley feud all of a sudden. Like it was super random just because Lashley or Moose eliminated him at, in a battle royal, a triple A, like kind of, you know, pulling hairs here, splitting hairs. So I, I really, really, I really think with this American top team, they're just, they're just spinning wheels, seeing where it goes, going day by day with it. I could be totally wrong, but I don't think they know what they're going to do with this. But Storm wins. I mean, Storm loses, unfortunately, and it's the last time we'll see the Cowboy. 
I, I liked the phone call to his wife. I liked when he was, you know, hugging everyone and, and saying, you know, saying goodbye and or whatever it was in a locker room. Him uh, twisting Xavier, Desmond Xavier's arm was funny. So it's 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 too bad we're going to see him gone. And we got to be real, folks. He, he was going to leave. You know, you should have seen this coming for a little while. And uh, I think he's going to go the NXT route. I, I probably won't watch that. So I think I've seen him <laughs> wrestle for the last time, safe to say. But this, the way they the way they did him was was wrong. I was totally okay with them doing a you know loser leaves town match. I had thought that from for the last year. I just thought you know do it against EC3 or something like that. So James Storm is out. Chandler Park versus John Bolin was next. This was kind of a waste of time in my opinion. Um, I, I what I did like is Joseph Park versus that mid card or Bully Ray. Them showing that match, that was a really good match. That was a good throwback match, and that one made sense. You know, like the, it's, it's like whenever they do these uh, GWN matches, it, it they're always so like random. And this one, showing you know Joseph Park, it it made sense because Joseph Park was you know a, a currently a character, and there's a storyline with him, and it. It all flowed really well, fit in together. However, this Chandler Park thing, I thought it was kind of ridiculous. And I know we got to get lost in the moment watching wrestling, but you know the way the Twitter and the Facebook was like, "Can Chandler Park wrestle?" It, it kind of insults our intelligence a little bit, since we know who he is. But we have to give it up to Impact for, um, you know, changing people's characters they come to the company and and they're, they're allowed to run with a different character than than the indies and that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow like there's still people who can't get over the alley character i hope we don't get this real long slow build with the chandler park thing no clue where they're going with this none but this was just kind of like a couple minutes of my life i can't get back i, I didn't enjoy it at all world title match we got kind of Ripped off on this one. This was Eli Drake versus Alberto El Patron at WrestlePro. And, you know, they, they're teasing a world title match. And this is what we get. And we know immediately when that it's a WrestlePro match that there's not going to be a title change. That's that's safe to say. Now, if in fact we're, you know, uh, not taped in advance and, you know, they, they were, you know, they were going live and, you know, there's a way you could probably work around that. But for the most part, we knew what was going to happen. The match itself for a heel versus heel dynamic, I thought was pretty good. And uh, WrestlePro has that brace for impact card coming up. That looks amazing. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it's well attended. You know, this particular show didn't really appear to be. But, you know, I've been to a lot of indie shows and, you know, indie shows are usually a couple hundred, you know, two, three hundred people. So, you know, I'm not expecting them to uh, have a stadium full of wrestling fans. But so it, it was enjoyable for what it was. They ended the match in the safest way possible. Eli Drake again hitting someone with the championship belt. Did it to Matt Seidel. Um did it to someone else. I, I don't remember exactly who, but there was another match. It might have been Eddie Edwards or I don't. Uh, God, I don't remember who it was. But Eli Drake getting the cheap wins is getting a little old. Like we do want to see a degree of that because he's a heel and that's old school. But dude needs some clean wins. I mean, please come on. He won the title clean to begin with. So come on, guy. Impact Tag Team title match, LAX versus OVE. You know, they put a stipulation here if LAX loses that they have to leave Impact Wrestling. So at that point, we know they're probably not going to lose. However, I never saw an official spoiler by any means about how this was going to end. But it was, you know, I was under the impression LAX was probably going to win and regain the titles. The two teams continue to put together really good matches. And OVE, man... Talented group, much better as heels. 
I mean, that was the smartest thing Impact did in a while from the from a booking standpoint. You got this heel team that was like over, and then you got this baby face team that isn't over at all. So they made the natural, logical choice and swapped them over. Sammy Callahan has added something. If there was no Sammy Callahan and we weren't really getting homicide wrestling, like kind of how he is now a little bit, and it was just these four guys going at it every week, I think we'd be really bored by this. But they've progressed it, and it's been good. Where are the Canadian tag team that came down randomly the other day? What's up with <laughs> Oh, man. Um, they kill me sometimes. But I think they, I, you know, obviously the Barbed Wire Massacre 3 is coming up. There's more legs with this feud, but they've got to build this tag team division. And I was saying on the end of the year show, last year was a year of the X division. This needs to be the year of the knockouts, in my opinion. But the tag team division is a close second. And I think they can get away with a weak main event scene scene if they can make the knockouts and tag team division, if they can get that on, on par with the with what the X division is doing right now. But the match was 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 enjoyable. I didn't like um, Ortiz kicking out of the finisher. You know, uh, OVE used LAX's finisher against them. I didn't like him kicking out of it. It. I get when someone uses your finisher, you know, you're supposed to kick out of it. But that's a pretty high impact move. It's not a move that people should kick out of. And they did the same thing that they did with uh, Trevor Lee and Ishimori. To where LAX had the near fall and then they uh, then they went for the finisher. So we're going to see what what this happens with this going forward. You know, they're building towards a barbed wire massacre three. I would imagine that's in two weeks because that wasn't, you know, even a little bit teased for next week. So that's the match. That's going to be crazy that we really want to see. But they got to build this tag team division up. If you heard my interview with Adam Thornso of Reno Scum, he said that he'd be talking to Bob Ryder in January. You know, to to re-engage him and see if there's something. You know, they have something for him. God, bring them back. Bring Christina back. Then you got these other two tag teams that have females. Because if you bring OBE's, uh, you know, Nevaeh Kristen there, you got Diamante. Man, and Diamante is another name we got to keep forward, keep an eye out at this set of tapings. If she is not there, that's a bad sign. I understand that she didn't come to this one because he was injured. You know, it was in Canada probably an unnecessary expense if she was just going to stand there not really be much of a talking role but this this set of tapings is going to give us a really good idea of who's there and who's not there but overall great episode solid episode had some things that i didn't care for the bookends were really good which i've you know often said that kind of make or makes or breaks an episode of impact they get to have a nice opener a nice main event you guys can pull it off so um good main event got to work on this global title scene i think right now no one cares and eli drake has not quite been the champion for me that i've i've been hoping for as as good as he is on the mic like i i think i like them better as the king of the mountain champion, I think I like them better doing the fact of life. Like now that he has more mic time, it's still really good, but it's not, it's not gold to me. Like the past stuff in 2016 was. So thanks for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you for listening to every single word, whatever platform you are listening to on. If you're a brand new listener, please hit subscribe and the uh, Impact Lounge YouTube channel is taking a bit of a break. There's not a lot to talk about. Um, I'm pretty busy, so I'm not going to make up stuff. But I'm probably going to lay it low for a couple months, uh, except for big news. And then when the summer rolls around, when NBA season's done, and I'm not um, not betting on sports anymore, then then uh, we'll get we'll get crazy with the channel once again. So thanks for listening, folks. Talk to you soon. Peace.